Hey guys, welcome to the 98th C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use settings. So, all you're going to need for this tutorial is a button and a text box. And basically, what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is making it so when you open a program, you can save a setting, you close the program, and then reopen it, and that setting will still be there. So, the first step in uh, making a setting is going to project and then the properties of your project. Now go down to the settings tab right here and in this table right here is where all your settings will be. In order to add a new setting just go ahead and type in this text box right here and give a name to your setting. I'm just going to call it name because we're going to be storing someone's name inside of this property. Um, and the type right here is basically just the type of variable that it will be stored in. So we're going to store it as a string because this person's name should be stored as a string. So once you have all your property or properties all set, just go ahead and click save up here. Go back to your form and then double click on this button because basically we're going to make it so whenever you click on this button, it'll save um, the text in this text box to the name property. In order to access the property that you just created, just type out the name of your uh, project. And mine is Windows Forms Application 1. Then go dot properties, properties namespace, go to the settings class, and go to the default um, property, and then finally inside of here should be the property that you created. And yep, there's our name property we just created. And we're going to set this equal to textbox one's text. And now, in order to save this property, we're not done yet. We have to use the uh, save method. And that's inside of this uh, default property right here. So I'm going to copy this because I don't feel like rewriting it. And then I'm just going to go to the uh, save, yeah, save method. And this will just save the property. Because if we don't do this, it will just set this property equal to whatever text box one's text is. And then when we close the program, all that data will be lost. So in order to save it, uh, we have to save it in order for it to be uh, in effect when we open the program again. And we're just going to have uh, textbox one's text be equal to whatever the property is. So we're just going to copy this out here again because I'm lazy. Alright. So now when we debug here, textbox one's text should be equal to the property. And um, when we click this button, it should save the contents of this text box into the property. So I'm just going to store Adam inside of the name property. So now when I click this button, it should save it. So now when I reopen, I should see Adam in the text box because it saved the property and then it's rereading the property. Yep, you get Adam in that text box right there. Now you can also store integers as well, and it's the same deal. You just go back here, create another um, property, let's call it age. This time we'll save it as an integer. Save this so we can see the property. We'll just create another text box right here for the age. And that'll be text box two. So now I'm just gonna copy this all out again because I don't feel like writing it. And inside of the default property, we should have age. Yep, we have an integer age. I'll just set this equal to converting the uh, text box's text into an integer uh, to end, 32, and then text box to text. And no matter how many properties you have, you only have to save it once. So don't think that since you have two properties, you have to save it twice. No, you only need one. You only need to save it once. So basically, this will just convert uh, text box to text into an integer, and then save that, and then save that property. And we're also going to have it read that property once more. We're going to say text box choose text equals that age property. Dot age and then convert it into a string since it's stored as an integer. So now we get Adam and zero on 15, so I'll put 15, save it, reopen it, and we should get 15. Yep, it saved it and it reloaded it. So in case you're wondering how to store um, custom variable types, such as the button, well, let's call this a button A. So right here, we don't have a button option. However, we can do browse. And browse will allow us to browse through all of the uh, namespaces 
that we currently have open. So if we want to do a button, we go to Windows Forms, Forms namespace, and scroll down until we see the button variable. Click OK. And now we can store it as a button. So I'm just going to save this. Let's go back and see if it worked. Let's copy this. Alright, and we should have a variable called button A. And yeah, it's called a button. So now we can only set this equal to a button. So I'll just set it equal to button 1. Build, make sure we get no errors. And yep, that's perfectly fine. Setting it equal to a button. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial, so see you guys.